Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Welcome to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making knockout designs. A knockout design is where you superimpose letters or an image over another word. It's stylish, fun, and very on trend right now. So here are some of the knockout designs that I made recently. This is a name sign where you can see the name in the big bold letters and the first names are in accent letters. So you see how the accent letters go right through the big bold letters, allowing you to read all the words. That's knockout design. And this is a larger sign that I made for one of my favorite places in the world, Castaway Key. The accent text running through it says, Cabana life is the best life because we love the cabanas on the island. And this glitter mug here is yet another example of a knockout design, only this time I've superimposed an image of a bear on top of the word mama. Okay, so today I will show you how you I made this knockout design in Cricut Design Space. In fact, I'm going to show you three different methods, the print preview method, the Inkscape method, and the Illustrator method. And then I'll walk you through the entire process of creating one of these awesome knockout signs. All you'll need to make this sign is some vinyl, transfer tape, twine, uh, super glue and a ceramic tile like one of these. I got these at my local home improvement store for just $1.50 a piece. So this is really a very inexpensive project with big appeal. All right, so let's head on over to Cricut Design Space and let's get to work. So in Cricut Design Space, click on New Project and then click on a text icon over on the left and type in your main word or name. I'm going to use Castaway Key, which is a place in the Bahamas. And then go up to the top and click on Font. Now you want to choose a font that is big and bold and chunky for the best effect for a knockout design. For this tutorial, I am going to use Times New Roman Bold. Um, other good fonts that work well for knockout designs are noted over on my blog, so head on over there if you want some other options. But let's go ahead and search on Times. That's appropriate for this sign, and I'm going to do Times New Roman and change it to Bold. You'll notice that the letters are kind of far apart. We want them much closer together. We want to form a nice, solid, bold word. So I'm going to click the down arrow under letter space to move them closer together like this. But you can see there's still gaps in between letters. So I'm going to click advance and do ungroup to letters to separate every letter out individually. And then I'm going to move them where I want them to be. Now here's a tip. Uh, hold down the shift key as you click and drag and that will keep everything on the line without it, you know, th your letters becoming uneven or anything. I think this looks pretty good. So select everything and click weld. Okay, so this word is good to go for now. Now we need to create our accent letters. So click on text again. And I'm going to type in a little phrase. We love cabanas on Castaway Key. So I'm going to Put in cabana life is the best life and I'm gonna make this a little smaller so i can see it on my canvas now i want to change the font to a script font a pretty script font that's a, a good accent to the big bold font now i'm going to use a free one called i love glitter and it's over at defont.com so to define it you just go to font.com type in i love glitter and it comes right up and you click download and I have a whole tutorial on how to install fonts, if you're not sure. Uh, but I'll do it really quickly for you here. So once it's downloaded, you click on Open here at the bottom in uh, the Chrome browser. And you open up the folder and you uh, click the OTF version. And here on the Mac, I just click Install Font. And that's really all there is to do it. If you're on Windows or on an iPhone or iPad, check my tutorial on more specific ways. And then be sure you reload Cricut Design Space if you haven't installed that font before. But I have, so we're going to go ahead and just search for glitter. And the font comes up right here. Now you'll see this letter space is way off. So again, we're going to go up to letter spacing and we're going to bring this in. Because when we have script fonts, we want all the letters touching as if it's actually written out by hand, right? So this is okay, but there's no spaces in between the words. So I'm going to go back to my font book and 
I have, I can see all the characters and then there's special characters in here that we can use. This is why the I Love Glitter font is so useful. Uh, so I'm going to copy this one. Just go to edit, copy, and then go back to Cricut Design Space. Double click on the text and I'm going to insert it right where I want it to be. And it shows up. That doesn't quite look the way I want, but that's the, the idea behind, you know, creating like the special the, you know, using this font is that you get to use these special characters. Now go back to font book. I'm going to click something a little bit more simple, like this line here, and I'll copy this. And I'm going to replace that kind of a squiggly line with this swoopy line. And I'll put it in between all of my words. There we go. And I'm going to put one at the end and at the beginning as well. There we go. That looks pretty good. Reduce the font size because we want it to be about the same size as our big bold word. It can be a little wider. I don't recommend it be uh, shorter, but wider is fine. So this looks pretty good to me. So we have our two layers here. And what I'm going to want to do is put this script right on top of my bold font. You'll notice it's a little hard to read, right? What we want to do is create some white space around that. So I'm going to show you three different ways that you can do that. First, we're going to go ahead and hide our bold font. So that's out of our way. And then I'm going to change this accent font to be a print then cut. And then I'm going to go ahead and click make it and then click continue, even though I'm not actually going to do anything. Click send to printer and it gives you a print preview. Make sure add bleed is on. And this graphic over here, click and save it. So on the Mac, I can right click with my mouse and choose save image as. You can also just click and drag it onto your desktop or into a folder. Now I give it an appropriate name so I can find it later. And I save it. All right, so now we have made a copy of that print preview. We're gonna cancel everything. And we're going to go right back to our canvas, click on upload, upload, browse, and find that print preview image we just saved. It's going to look like this. So click simple and click continue. And we want to get rid of that box that's around it. We don't need that. I'm going to make it a little bigger so I can see it. You just click on it and it disappears here. And then click continue. And save it as a cut image. And then click save. So there it is, let's insert it into our canvas. Now the first thing that we need to do is rotate it. Hold down the shift key and click the rotate icon and move it over. So it's at the same orientation as our accent text. And now resize it with the resize button in the lower right corner. So it's about the same size as your accent text. Let's change it to white just like that. And then we're going to send this to the back so that it goes behind our accent text and we can see it better. So now you can see we've created a area of white space that we can use on our big bold text to help you be able to see that accent text better. You just want to resize it until it's, it appears to be really close to matching the accent text. That looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, you know, that print preview, it, it's very small, so it skips a lot of bits. You can see the descender on the F is, you know, not, doesn't have any white space, but it's a lot better than it was. So let me show you what it will look like. So let's move this up onto our Word. And I'm going to unlock that, and you can change the size of, of your big bold font if it seems like it's not quite fitting, right? You want it to be bigger than your the, that outline. And I'm gonna select both, and I'm gonna click on Slice. And so what we get is that we have now a white space in our big bold letter that we can then put our accent text into. And now there's white space all around it. And we can get rid of the parts that we don't need and there we go. We have just the two layers. We have our big bold text with um, some space cut out for our accent text.
Now if we select both of these layers, we'll see that it's currently 7.621 inches wide. And of course that doesn't necessarily match our sign size. So at this point you would just resize it to be the size that you want and then go ahead and cut it out. And I will show you exactly how I cut it out for my sign a little later. So if you want more accuracy in your outline, I can show you two other methods. Both use external programs. One is using Inkscape and the other is using Illustrator. If you don't have or want to use either of these, feel free to skip ahead to the next part of the tutorial. But I wanna show you two other methods of creating knockout designs uh, that are more accurate than this because you'll notice it wasn't really quite the same as my accent letter. So let's undo this and go back to where we have just our big bold text and our outline that we made and our accent text. So let's click in the corner up here where the rulers meet twice to hide our grid. And then we are going to um, hide the layers that we don't need right now. So that would be our big bold text layer and our outline text layer. All right, so now we just have our accent text layer and you need to take a screenshot of just this text. So on the Mac, I do this by doing Command Control Shift 4. Windows, you can select the Start button, type Snipping Tool in the search box on the text bar and then select Snipping Tool from the list of results. And then you select the area of the screen that you want to capture. And that's how you get just a part of the screen. So now let's head on over to Inkscape. Uh, if you don't have this program, it is free and you can get it at inkscape.org. So I've started a new document already and we're going to paste in the screenshot that we just took. So here it is. We want to make sure it fits in our canvas all the way. So hold down the shift key as you click and drag it to make it smaller. There we go. So there is a pixel graphic of the outline text. Now we're gonna to go to path and select trace bitmap. Make sure your threshold is 0.9 and you've clicked remove background and then click okay. And close that window. So now we have a traced image of what we just pasted in. Go to path and click outset. And this makes it bigger, just like this. We've expanded the path that we created. Then go to path and do break apart. And now it's all black or it should be all black or all the same color. And we can get rid of the parts that we don't need. So just drag the big path out and select and remove everything else that we don't need it. So all we have left is just this outline here. So now we have a path of the outline of our accent text. Go to file, click on save as, and uh, give it an appropriate name and make sure the format is plain SVG. Just make sure you're putting it somewhere you can find it and click save. And now we have an SVG outline of our accent text. Switch back to Cricut Design Space, click on upload, upload image, browse. Find the SVG that you just created and click open. And here it is, click on save. And uh, click insert images. And you'll need to resize it, of course. It'll probably be small or too big. And uh, just use that resize button and drag it down so that it's about the same size. If you change it to white, then you can put it um, behind your accent text so that you can get it to just the right size. That looks pretty good, actually. So, yeah, that looks great. And you'll see it's a lot more accurate. Um, if you compare it to the Cricut Design Space version, the print preview version that we made, you can see it's really quite a bit different. We can see that we have all of the places for the descenders and everything has uh, space for it. Now let me show you the Illustrator method. Take a screenshot of just that section. So use your uh, snipping tool. If you have Illustrator, go to Illustrator. And you're gonna paste that in and resize it so it fits on your canvas. Just like that. And then you go to Object, choose Image Trace, Make and Expand. And now it's traced that image that you typed in. And I want you to uh, remove the border that gets put around it so that you just have the image like this. And then select it and go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And you're gonna want your offset to be about 
1.1, but you'll want to uh, experiment with it and your join should be round. It'll look something like this. Go ahead and press OK. And then you'll see something that looks like this. Anywhere where there was like a, a center to a, a letter, you get those funny bubbles. Go to Pathfinder and click on Unite. There we go. Now everything is united together and it's white and we can just leave it like this. We don't have to change the color. Uh, click, go to file, choose save as, give it an appropriate name, put it in a good spot and save it as an SVG file. Just as I'm showing here. Now we go back to Cricut Design Space. We click on upload and we upload our image. We go find the Illustrator outline we just created and we bring that in and we're going to put this onto our canvas by inserting the image. So there we have the outline that we just created in Illustrator. We're going to resize that again so that fits our text. We should weld that while we're at it. Can't forget to do that. All right, so it looks like it's about the right size. The really only way to know if it's the right size is to, um, you know, put the text, put the outline behind the accent text so you can see how it fits. But already you can see that it's, this is also improved upon um, the other two versions, right? So that's the Inkscape and that's the Illustrator version. The Illustrator version is a lot more accurate. So let's show our big bold version and let's take a look at these two differences. So this is the Cricut version, the print preview version, um, which is inaccurate at best, but in a pinch it works fine. It gives you the white space that you need so that your accent text shows up on your big bold word. Um, so you just wanna resize that so that it fits in there as best as you can. So that's the print preview version. Let's take a look at the Inkscape version. Let's bring that to the front and move our text into position to bring that to the front again as well. And there we see um, it's definitely improved, right? There's lots of space now. I mean, this is good enough, right? It's not identical to the text, but it's very similar. And then we look at the Illustrator version. Move that into position. Resize it so it all fits. That's pretty um, exact, right? So, you know, this is obviously my preference is the Illustrator version. That's the one that I'll use. So I'll get rid of the other two. But you use whichever one you're able to do. It really just depends on what tools you have available to you. If all you have is print preview, then use that. It's better than not having that at all. So I'm gonna select both of these layers here and do slice so that I remove the parts that I don't want, just like I showed you uh, earlier in this video. So that'll be three layers that I don't want. There we go. And now we have our big bold text with our space created and our accent line. And this looks awesome and it looks good to go. I'm going to change the color of the accent line. You don't have to change the color, of course, but I'm gonna change it so that I have two different colors when I cut them out. So I'll just switch this to red. It doesn't really matter what color it is so long as it's put on different mats. Go, let's click Make It. And uh, you'll see that it separates into the two mats. Now, my sign is 24 inches long, and right now this is just about eight. It's not long enough, so we need to change the size. Let's click on Templates, and let's do a search for our basic canvas. And I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna choose a rectangle, but I'm gonna click Custom and put in the size of my sign. So it is 24 inches wide. Click that Unlock button there, and then uh, six inches high. And it'll create my sign template for me so I can see the size of my sign and I can resize my text to match it. Let's hide the uh, background there so we can see it a little better. There we go. So this is the outline of my sign. I'm gonna select both layers and just resize it so that it seems to fit. Be sure to give yourself a little white space on 
all you know on all four sides of your text so it looks good and if you'd be putting the rope on the sides of your sign like I'm going to be sure to save room for that so I'm gonna do mine about like this it seems pretty good now you'll know it's 18 inches long now that's pretty long and so and when I click make it it tells me I need my 24 inch mat right but I know not everybody out there has a 24 inch mat so let me show you how to do this without using a 24 inch mat so this is a larger than matte project in that case. So what we do is we click on shapes and choose a square and create a, click the little unlock button to create a rectangle and make it about half the size of your word and position it, you know, somewhere like that. And then right click and choose duplicate. So now we have two identical rectangles. So we're going to uh, slice, we're going to slice our big bold text and our, um, rectangle and then we're going to do the same thing with our accent text and our rectangle so we're creating two halves by slicing right so you just select that accent text and you select the rectangle and then you click on slice and it cuts it in half for you you just want to make sure you do it in the same spot so now I have one half of each side of the accent text make sure that everything's the same color and then I have um, half, one half, and another half of my big bold text. Again, make sure everything's the same color and you can get rid of all the extra stuff you don't need. So there we go. Now we have split our design in half so it will fit on a 12 inch mat. We just put that back into position to make sure everything is exactly the way we want it and click make it. Now you can see we're using a whole lot less vinyl and we're putting it onto a 12 by 12 mat. This is a great tip if you um, don't have that larger mat or just don't want to use that much vinyl. If you want, you can click and drag the lines in your print preview just so that you have a little bit more space when you're weeding. I like to do that. It's a little bit, a little bit extra space helps. And then click continue. And you're going to just go ahead and choose your Cricut and then click browse all materials and select uh, vinyl. And I'm going to use my Oracle 651 so it sticks really well to my sign. So you just choose premium outdoor vinyl and you cut it. And that's it. Okay, so here is our cut vinyl. I did uh, turquoise, blue, and black. And we just need to weed it. So if you've never weeded before, uh, it's pretty simple. You're really just peeling off the vinyl that you don't need from your design. Just go slow so that you don't accidentally take off bits that you don't want and uh, make sure that everything is off like this. This hat was a really easy one to weed. And we'll do the same thing with our blue. Uh, a little bit right there wasn't going to come off, so I'm using my weeding tool to keep it down and then holding it as I peel off the excess vinyl. This is a very thin, fragile font, so be careful. All right, so here we have our two weeded pieces. We're going to need some transfer tape, but first let's cut these in half so that we can put them side by side the way they're supposed to be. Do the same thing for our accent line. There we go, now we need some transfer tape. So we're gonna cut off a, a length that is just about the right, um, you know, it's the right size for our castaway key line. Okay, so here we go, we have our uh, vinyl and we have our transfer tape and we're going to apply the transfer tape on top of our weeded vinyl just go nice and slow try to line up the grid lines on your transfer tape with the word it'll help you a bit later when you're trying to match it up to the other half or other parts that you're going to use all right and now we need to match it up to the other side this is going to be tricky right because we split it in half you just need to um, go nice and slow and peel off the backing So there we go, there we have our castaway key. I'm gonna adjust this W because I didn't think it was lined up quite right. And you can do this, you can peel it off the transfer tape if you're very careful and get it into just the right position. You know, if you can, it's best to split uh, your word in between two letters, but I didn't really have that option because of the, all the angular letters I'm using. All right, so now we need to get our accent text 
onto that piece of transfer tape with our big bold word, right? So again, like I recommend that you just put your head right over it so that you can see right through the transfer tape and you know make sure you've got that in just the right spot. And then gently pull off the backing on your vinyl so that everything sticks okay. You might want to use your scraper tool. Make sure that's uh, you know sticking to your transfer tape as good as you can get it. All right, so now let's do the other side. Again, go nice and slow. Be careful. Put your head right over it so you can see it really well. It'll be much easier to you know make sure that all of your letters are falling within within that empty white space. And once you got it, go ahead and press it down. And peel off the backing carefully. Use that scraper tool. That accent line is very, very thin. And I noticed that my little line didn't quite match up, so I'm just going to take my weeding tool and I'm going to uh, move it so that it's in a different position and is matching because we can do this before we apply it to our sign so that it is um, looks the way it should. All right, so here we have our decal all ready to go. It looks great, doesn't it? Now we need our board. Now again, I am using a ceramic tile that looks like wood. They are so inexpensive and they're finished beautifully and super durable. Um, but they are ceramic, so it's going to be a little harder to stick your vinyl to it. I like to start by prepping the surface by, with some rubbing alcohol. Just wipe it down to make sure that we get any little dust or dirt or impurities up off of the ceramic. And then once that has dried, we're going to put our vinyl on. You want to make sure that you're centering it and you got it straight. And I think the best way to do this is just to get a ruler and a pencil you know, measure it, find that center point. If you if you have a grid like I'm using here, just find the center point, which is that blue line, so that's convenient. And, you know, you, you don't want it to be crooked on your board because you'll notice it. <laughs> All right, so make sure you got it straight and centered based on your measurements. And when it's good, you can press it down I suggest you start in the middle and then smooth away from the middle. It's, the vinyl is going to be reluctant to stick to the ceramic, so you need to get that smoothed down as well as you can. And then you want to very gently pull the backing tape, the transfer tape, away from your vinyl. I had to help it as I went. My vinyl was more likely to want to stick to the transfer tape than my to my ceramic board. So I had to, every time there was a little, little uh, serif or anything like that, or a new letter, I had to help it out. But with some patience, I got it off. And once it's on the board, it sticks fine. It's just that the transfer tape was holding it in place. And sometimes it's like this, you know, sometimes you just have to go really slow to get your vinyl to transfer. Other times it's super easy, but it really depends on what material you're using. All right, there we go. We have finished it. Uh, let's take our piece of transfer tape backing and put that on to our design and we're gonna scrape it again. Just to make sure that's on there really nice and firm and um, well secured to our ceramic board. Of course, you can use a wood board instead or anything else really that your vinyl will stick to. But this, these serving boards were so inexpensive and they look so awesome. And there we go, it looks really good. All right, so now this is a ceramic tile and it is not light. It's maybe four or five pounds, I'd say. And there's no like way to like attach it to the wall currently, it's just a tile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, use some rope. I bought this grass rope at my home improvement store. 
let me show you the tag in case you want to get this. So it's grass cord. It was really inexpensive. It was 50 feet of it, and I think it was just a couple bucks. And I'm going to wrap this around either end of my ceramic board and then tie a knot in the back that I will secure with super glue so that it doesn't come undone. And I will create little loops so that we could just hang it on the wall with this. So let me show you how I did this. So I just uh, wrapped it around four times like this, and then I flipped it over, and we're gonna tie a knot, and you wanna make sure it's the knot is near the top of your board, uh, the back side of your board. And uh, just tie a square knot, not a granny knot. And then the way I created a loop for the screws that I'm gonna put into my wall is I just sort of tucked it around behind it, and I tucked the other end, and then I knotted that as well. And we did the exact same thing on the other side. We loop our grass cord around four times, or however many times that you would like to do it. We tie a square knot in the back near the top of our board, and then we create a loop and secure it with another knot. Cut off the excess, and then when we're all done, we just put a little super glue in where the knots are so that the knots don't want to come undone. We wouldn't want this falling off the wall and breaking. Just a few drops of super glue into the centers of each of those knots should be enough to keep it, those fibers, you know, to glue those fibers together so that they don't want to come undone. And that's it. Give it some time to dry, but that's it. We have finished it. It looks amazing. So this knockout technique is perfect for creating personalized signs and mugs and really anything where you wanna show the names. I recommend you keep a few of these ceramic tiles on hand so that you can make an inexpensive yet super cool sign like at a moment's notice as a gift. Just think of all the name signs that you can make your friends and family. It's amazing. So my next tutorial is very special and I've been working on it for several days now. I am going to show you how to make your very own glitter tumbler, just like this mama bear tumbler. It's not as scary as you might think and I will walk you through the entire process step by step so that you can see exactly how it works. So that's it for today. Remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time.